Replacing the power supply with another one for sound quality reasons can pay off hugely, but not always. What kind of power supplies are there and which one to choose? It must have been 15 years ago that I was using a squeeze box and heard about a power supply that would improve the sound quality considerably. It was the original S-Booster Best of Two Worlds and when I tried it I was immediately sold. When I later on researched Raspberry Pis with headboard DACs it was even more clear. Also powering the Raspberry Pi separately from the headboard DAC, the latter with the S-Booster BOTW Eco PMP made a clear difference. Now years later I have a stack of audio file grade power supplies to try on anything audio I review. The function of a power supply is easily explained. To effectively distribute electricity from the power plant to the local distribution point, the network uses very high voltages that vary from 44,000 to 765,000 volts alternating current, since that gives minimal power loss. Close to the homes ginormous transformers reduce that to the grid voltage, 230 volt AC 50 Hz where I live, 150 volts AC 60 Hz in the States while in other places 100 or 120 volts is used. That works fine for lightning and some domestic appliances but electronics need a direct current and quite a lower voltage. Depending on the appliance it might need 5 volts for instance for small streamers up to 60 to 70 volts or even more for power amplifiers. The task of a power supply is to reduce the voltage, convert it to direct current, buffer it, filter out noise and regulate the DC voltage. The power supply is often internal when a current is higher or more than one voltage is needed. This is the case for instance in integrated amplifiers where the preamplifier works at a lower voltage than the power amplifier. By using a transformer with several secondary windings several AC voltages are output and thus several buffers, capacitors, filters and rectifiers are used. When external power supplies are used in the shape of a power brick or wall ward, usually only one voltage is output, although there are proprietary power supplies that can be bought as upgrade for amplifiers that output multiple voltages. The advantage for equipment manufacturers of external power supplies is that all legal matters are with the responsibility of the power supply manufacturer. The latter, often Chinese, have their products tested and certified worldwide. As a result the equipment manufacturer that thus only sells low voltage equipment need no further testing and certifying. There are several ways a power supply can convert AC grid voltage to low DC voltage. The oldest is the so called linear power supply. It converts AC input voltage to DC output using a transformer, rectifier, filter and regulator. The transformer steps down the voltage, the rectifier converts it to DC, the filter smoothens the output and the regulator maintains a constant voltage by dissipating excess power as heat. The second type is the switch mode power supply that rapidly switches a transistor on and off. This high frequency switching allows for smaller lighter transformers and higher energy efficiency. It includes a rectifier, filter, switch, transformer and regulator to provide a stable output voltage. The third type is the supercapacitor power supply. It stores energy through electrostatic charge separation. It can quickly store and release large amounts of energy offering fast charging and discharging cycles. Supercapacitors have a high power density, long cycle life and are ideal for short term energy storage or backup power applications. That leaves us with the elephant in the room. The rechargeable batteries like power banks and lithium cells. They store energy through reversible 
chemical reactions. During charging, an external voltage drives electrons back into the battery, reversing the chemical reaction to store energy. During discharging, the stored energy is released as electrons flow back out, allowing the battery to power devices until it needs recharging again. As such, it is not a power supply in the sense that it doesn't directly use the grid power. But in the end, it does need grid power to be charged. Let's take a look at the pros and cons of each system. The basic linear power supply is rather simple in design, although audio grade ones can be rather sophisticated. It also has minimal electromagnetic interference, uses linear regulation that provides a clean output with low ripple and noise. But it's inefficient, it wastes energy by converting it into heat. Due to the transformer needed, it's also relatively big and heavy, does work on one grid voltage only, although some can switch between 115 and 230 volts. Since transformers use copper wire, it's also relatively expensive and it's slightly slower in providing current compared to some other ones. The switch mode power supply is in about everything the opposite of the linear power supply. It's highly efficient and thus generates less heat. Since it uses a very small transformer, it is small in size and light in weight while also being cheaper. Very important to manufacturers is that they can almost always handle any grid voltage between 90 and 250 volts AC. So together with the worldwide certification, the light weight, the small size and low price, they are very convenient for equipment manufacturers. But the universal law to preserve misery works here too. For the high frequency switching causes electromagnetic interference. It therefore requires very experienced engineers to develop a low noise, low ripple version suited for audio. That also requires costly components which has budget consequences. It is also known to have higher peak to peak voltages that can cause voltage spikes in poor designs. At the other hand, it is capable of delivering current very fast. And then the supercapacitor. It is somewhere between a battery and a capacitor and provides fast charging and discharging. So it is not only fully charged very fast, it can also deliver current very fast. It further has a long cycle life, even up to hundreds of thousand charge cycles and can work in a wide range of temperatures. But the energy density is lower than rechargeable batteries and does need to be charged more often. And there are voltage limitations, they lose charge over time and they are more expensive than traditional rechargeable batteries. For higher capacity and higher voltages many supercapacitors are needed, making it an expensive solution. The current rechargeable batteries and power packs are based on lithium and have a lifespan of 500 to even 1000 charge cycles when charged intelligently. They are also more affordable than supercapacitors, have a higher energy density and thus need charging less frequently. In general they are slow in delivering current due to high internal resistance and the output is noisier than the alternatives. After experimenting with audio grade, medical grade and El Cheapo power supplies, I share my opinion on which type of power supply should be used for which application with the necessary reserves. For there is no absolute truth as far as I can see. With all analog equipment I would try a linear power supply first. Think of phono pre-pres and pre-amplifiers and the like. For all digital equipment I would start off with a quality switch mode power supply or supercapacitor based one. Think of network bridges, digital to digital converters and network switches. Digital equipment needs to switch at very high frequencies, 
This is not a basic quality of linear power supply. But clearly overdimensioned ones, meaning far higher amperage than needed, might work. Having said that, if you have tried combination of power supplies and equipment and had a different outcome, I fully understand. But what to do with streamers, DACs and other equipment that mixes digital and analog electronics? That largely depends on the electronic design of the equipment. This is best illustrated by the Volumio Motivo network player that comes with a switch mode power brick. Replacing it with an S-Booster BOTW PMP Eco MK2 power supply did degrade the sound quality, quite the opposite of what you normally expect. It appeared that the Motivo has a linear power supply inside that uses the 9 volts DC from the switch mode power supply to produce lower voltages for the analog circuits. The review of the Sean Jacobs ARC6 DC4 power supply for the core Dave showed that using an overdimensioned linear power supply works great on that DAC. But then again, the switch mode power supply in my Grim Audio Mu2 digital player, server and DAC shows that when done right, switch mode power supplies can sound great. So what's to learn from all this? Well perhaps the order of a test sequence of power supplies depending on the device it is used on. Because further than that I can't go. So the best approach is to do your research online and amongst friends that share your hobby. Then try to order the most likely best choice and order that from a company that lets you return it if it doesn't improve the setup. Give the power supply some days to burn in by keeping the equipment it power switched on. If you don't hear a difference, just return it, of course nicely packed in the original box. And now you then have the uncertainty that it might have sounded better, but you couldn't hear it. Get over that. If you don't hear the difference, you shouldn't pay for it. And on that bombshell we come to the end of this video. If all goes to plan, there will be a new video next week, but chances are this time the planning is too tight and I will have to skip one week. So subscribe to this channel or follow me on Patreon, Facebook, LinkedIn or Instagram to stay informed when new videos are out. Help me reach even more people by giving this video a thumb up or link to this video on the social media. It is much appreciated. Many thanks to those viewers that support my channel financially. It keeps me independent and lets me improve the channel further. If that makes you feel like supporting my work too, the links are in the comments below this video on YouTube. I'm Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you next time around. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.